That's the message that we're preaching here this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus is coming soon. And some would say, yes, well, we've heard that many times that He's coming soon. But understand something. Prophecy has not been fulfilled like we've seen prophecy today. Hear me, folk. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Soon and very soon, I've said it many times, we're going to see the King. I believe we are that terminal generation that will see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask this question. How many, uh, how many preachers today are he- heralding the message that Jesus is coming? How many preachers today are saying, hey, Jesus is about to split the eastern skies? You won't hear much of that going on today. You know what they're talking about? What can I get in this life? My best life now. Are you hearing me? Folk, I want to tell you something. You can have and gain the whole world, but lose your own soul. What would it profit if a man gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Look at me. Jesus is coming back. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell him he's coming back? Hallelujah to the Lamb. And you better make sure you're found in Christ Jesus, the Lord, and not in some denomination. Your denomination is not going to save you. Your preacher is not going to save you. Your preacher should be warning you. Are you hearing me? And challenging you to live holy and pure lives before God Almighty. What? Did I say that? Pure and holy? You can't live pure and holy without the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Amen? Bless the Lord. In Joel 2, 1, listen to what Joel says here. Joel says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion... Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the Lord cometh, for he is nigh at hand. Blow the trumpet. You know what they use a trumpet for in in, in Old Testament times? Understand something. The Lord put that into effect to blow the trumpet, uh, especially when an enemy was about to approach or an enemy about to attack. They didn't have cell phones back then. How many know that? They didn't have cell phones, they didn't have a telegraph or tell a woman or what have you, are you hearing me? Understand something, the only way that they could assemble themselves on the wall to do battle, hear me, is somebody blow the trumpet, blow the alarm in Zion. Can I tell you something, Pastor Martin's blowing the trumpet in Zion, prepare your heart for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh in Jesus' name. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. In uh, John, or I'm sorry, in Matthew 1 through 3, we, we see something here. Uh, uh, where am I at here? Matthew 1. We see this. I'm used to that being on the back, but it's not on there right now. So I'm going to have to flip over here. Hallelujah. Matthew 3, 1 through 3. Listen to what it says. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Help me. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Hallelujah. Can you say that with me, that last part? Make his path straight. Straight. Can I tell you the end time message that ought to be heralding from the pulpits of the United States of America and in third world countries as well? Repent for the kingdom of God is nigh. Make his way straight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Stood straight is the way, and I'm sorry, broad is the way to destruction and narrow is the way to eternal life. Understand something, child of God, hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand, it is a narrow walk for those that, that, uh, that are to enter into the kingdom of God Almighty. And understand something, there aren't many ways, there is one way, and that way is Jesus Christ and Him and Him alone. Matter of fact, the Bible says this, The Bible says that He is the door to the sheepfold. No person enters in without coming through that door. That door is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He is the way. He is the truth. And He is the life. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Ought not the message that Jesus is coming be 
heralded from the pulpits today here in the United States of America with what we're seeing going on over in the Middle East right now and what we're seeing going on in our nation today? How many know it's not hunky-dory in this nation? Hear me. This nation is becoming lawlessness. Hear me. Even as I'm speaking now. And there's, a com- there's coming a man on the scene called the Antichrist. Hear me. The man of lawlessness. Understand me. That, that will be a dictator that will rule and reign. Hear me. On the face of the earth. And you won't be able to buy or you won't be able to sell without his mark in your hand or on your forehead. I believe we're coming very close to that. We're coming to a cashless society. We're coming to a one world government. We're coming to a one world religion. We're seeing all this being set up before us. Are you hearing me, child of God? That in itself ought to make your head stand on end or make you begin to spin your wheels and think maybe we are the terminal generation. Jesus said this, hallelujah, he said that in Ezekiel 38, he said, uh, he told Ezekiel to speak of these dead bones. What was he talking about? He was talking about Israel becoming a nation. Hallelujah. He said, speak to these dead bones and command these dead bones to live again. How Understand something. 1948 or 1949, uh, 48 I believe it was, Israel became a nation. He said, that generation will see my coming. So that tells me one thing. We're getting real close. Somebody say amen. Ought not the church be preaching about this today? Not alone, many of, the, many of the pastors have never heard of the message that Jesus Christ is going to rapture the church out. Some don't believe in the rapture. Some do believe in the rapture. And we're one that certainly believes in the rapture of the church. You see, we're to warn the people ahead of time. Bless God. You see, modern day preachers today uh, are, are so engrossed in lattes, they're so engrossed with rock music, and they don't, don't want a message of gloom and despair. But can I tell you something? If you read the Bible, and they read the same Bible that I'm reading, look at me, the end is judgment being poured out upon the face of the earth. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to face the judgment of God. That's why I've given my heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And understand me. Understand me. Hallelujah. It's not lattes and it's not rock music that's going to cause you to be sustained in this last day. Hear me, child of God. The only thing that's going to sustain you is are you anchored and steadfast and unmovable and know the word of the living God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. You know what? And and I, I say this in all sincerity that much of the church world, what they're producing today, look at me, is nothing but entertainment in the house of God. All it does is put goosebumps on people's arms. Look at me. It's not the Spirit of God. It's a spirit, but it's another spirit. It's the spirit of the devil. The devil knows how to disguise himself. Are you hearing me? That's why it's necessary that we know about the Word of God. When they take the blood out of the song service, look at me. Understand something. Something's happening. There's a paradigm shift going on. Thank God we still preach the blood and thank God we still sing the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Because without blood, there is no remission of sin. And when you take the cross out of the church, when you take the blood out of the church, look at me, you got nothing but an entertainment center and hear me nobody gets saved all it is is a bless me club and can I tell you something a bless me club is not going to get it in this last day I feel sorry for those preachers hear me that are deceiving hundreds and thousands and thousands of kids hear me young people listen deceiving them and not getting their hearts prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's coming a great shaking in this nation. And I believe everything will be shaken to the core and the only thing that will stand is you standing on the word of the living God. I don't know about you, back years ago we used to sing a song. Standing on the promises of God I, I, I stand. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I tell you something? I'm going to stand on the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. Even now as we speak, 
we blow the trumpet in Zion. Your kids going to public schools, hear me, child of God, are being brainwashed for the Antichrist. Some would say, well, I don't know about that. I do know about it. Because our public school system is anti-Christ. Hello? Anything about our government is anti-Christ. Now understand something. Look at me. Obama is not the anti-Christ. But hear me. The very areas that we are bombing over in the Middle East, Syria, is the very area that the Antichrist will come out of. Understand something, folk. You don't know how close we are to World War III. If we can see, look at me, if we can see the Battle of Armageddon already being set up, and listen to me, Russia is not dead. Gog and Magog. God is stirring the heart of Putin. Hear me, the president of Russia. Russia is in great ties with Iran. Russia is in great ties with Syria. And they said, if we attack Assyria, you will hear the consequences. It says, we've got the capability, hear me, to destroy all Asia. Stop and think of this a second. While we're playing games in the church, look at me, playing games in the church, destruction is coming towards our ground. And somebody said, amen. amen. Hear me, folk, if there's ever a time to put your head on, get it out of the sand, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. Now stop and think of this. Understand, ISIS is for real. And ISIS is in this nation right now. I relayed to the prayer meeting yesterday. In Oklahoma, you've seen this, you've probably seen the, uh, the, 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 on the news. Oklahoma, a man, hear me, that was in prison, got converted to, uh, to, uh, Muslim religion, worked in a food processing plant, and they ended up firing him, and he went and killed and stabbed a woman and cut her head completely off and said, Aqaba, Debar, Debar, or whatever that is, how they say that, Allah is God. Can I tell you something? The president will pray that down as workplace violence. But can I tell you, it is terrorism that is hitting this nation. Call it like it is. Hear me. Matter of fact, we know that troublesome times are coming. Hard to live in times are coming, folk. Bless the Lord. We've not seen anything yet. But keep your head square and your eyes straight. Bless the Lord. Keep walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. For he shall secure us in a time such as this. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. I don't know about you, but I, don't, I take the Word of God serious. And I don't want to be playing around playing games with, with, uh, with uh, uh, the Lord God and playing games with the church. Hear me. I'm not here to entertain people. I'm not here, hear me, child of God, to be a comedian. I'm here to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to blow the trumpet unto the people and say, prepare your hearts, make straight the way of the Lord Jesus Christ because He comes soon in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what I'm tagged as? A preacher of gloom and doom. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. According to Scripture, Jeremiah was a preacher of gloom and doom. According to Scripture, hear me, hallelujah, Noah was a preacher of gloom and doom. But God shut him in and passed judgment upon a whole nation, upon the world. Are you hearing me? Can I tell you something? God's Word is still truth. His Word, listen, is not a man's word that it should lie, but it's God's word. And if God warns His people, prepare your heart for the coming of the Lord, we ought to be heralding it from the pulpits. And listen, hallelujah, coming against false doctrine that's trying to lead this church astray. And somebody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. But no, we're too engrossed in our lattes. We're too engrossed in our coffee shops. We're too engrossed, hear me, in our, in our, in our smoke bombs and all different types of things. We're too engrossed in that to begin to speak to the hearts of the people to prepare your heart for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord forevermore. Jesus is coming soon. 
Putin himself, I, was, I got on the internet and I started going through some of the, some of the uh, headlines in the news. You know what he's doing right now? He's putting missiles in Central America to point them at the United States of America. I'm talking about nuclear warfare. Folk, we are on the brink of chaos. We are on the brink of destruction. Well, you're a prophet that brings gloom and doom. No, I'm a prophet, hear me, and I don't declare myself a prophet. All I know is what the Word of God declares. Are you hearing me, child of God? Hallelujah, and I'm declaring unto you. Hallelujah, if there's ever a time to be red hot and on fire for God, if there's ever a time to reach our families with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, today is the day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, we cannot set back idly. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Putin wants to put uh, 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 missiles down in Central America. Stop and think of this a second. Wants to put missiles in Cuba and point them toward the United States of America. Can I tell you something? This world is in chaos. And what's the church doing? Tiptoeing through the tulips and entertainments and Hollywood programs on the stage. Ought not we be mourning, weeping, and crying for lost humanity that God might spare a nation? Oh, we don't want to hear anything like that. That's all right. I'm still going to blow the whistle. I'm still going to blow the trumpet. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You call me what you want to call me. You call me lame brain. You call me nuts. You call me what you want to call me narrow minded. But I do know what thus saith the Lord God Almighty. Judgment is coming and it's coming sooner than what the church realizes and understands. The blood of 1.5 million babies aborted in this nation every year is crying out for revenge. Are you hearing me child of God? Stop and think of this. Christianity is literally being blasphemed across this nation. Hallelujah. God, is, uh, God has been taken out of our armed forces. They don't want chaplains to pray. They don't want chaplains to bring Bibles. Are you hearing me, child of God? But it's all right to bring the Quran. Something's happening in this nation. And I say, God, spare a nation. Help us, Lord. We need a Holy Ghost, God set, sin killing revival. Run through the church today in the name of Jesus. The only thing that can turn this around is a Holy Ghost revival. And it's not going to come from a man, it's going to come from God Himself because God says no man will get glory. But I'll receive all glory. And I've got a funny feeling that every atheist, every agnostic, hear me, child of God, Hear me, all these entertainment centers that call themselves churches, they will bow a knee to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and give an account of what they have preached behind the pulpits in the name of the Lord. Hear me, child of God. I believe the only thing that's stopping, hear me, that's stopping the judgment of God is a few narrow-minded churches and people that still believe an old-fashioned message that stand on the old foundations of Jesus Christ and Him crucified is holding back a bunch of rot and filth and the judgment of God Almighty. I certainly believe that with all my heart. Understand me, just because a church runs hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands into, a, into their church doesn't mean that they're, they're, they're preaching the gospel. Look at me. Hallelujah. Big is not healthy. Look, hear me. If you look through the book of Revelations, you'll find out God admonished two churches, and they were the smallest churches in the book of Revelation of the seven churches of Asia Minor. I think Smyrna was one of them. They was very poor. But the largest was the Laodicean church. And God rebuked them and said, Wash your eyes with eyes have so that you might see your pitiful condition. I believe the church needs to wash their eyes with eyes have to see their pitiful condition where we stand spiritually. Can I tell you something? Grace is not a license to sin. Hear me. It's a license to free you from sin in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let us be the repairers of the breach. Let us restore the old foundations that have laid waste for many generations. Let us be called the repairers of the breach and the path 
that let that righteousness be restored in the house of God one more time in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know about you, but it's burning in my soul. I, uh, as, as I told the, the prayer group yesterday, my wife and I was watching a program. Many of you have probably watched it too. On television with the, over in Africa, Nigeria and Libya and, and uh, some of the African states, uh, regions, that uh, Ebola is running rampant through that nation and they try to build hospitals and it's filled up so quick that they can't, uh, they can't contain the people that are, are storming into some of these hospitals. And little kids, I mean little small kids weeping and crying and, and uh, dying by the hundreds even as we're speaking right now. Moms wanting to, to have respect for their little childs, to bury their little childs. They won't let them touch the child because Ebola will, will keep spreading. Are you hearing me? The Lord said in the last days there would be different types of diseases, all different types of things taking place. Can I tell you something? This is running rampant over in Africa. What can stop it from hitting the United States of America? If one of these terrorists could get a, could, could be contacted with that, all they'd have to do is go into a ball game, hear me, and spread it to 80,000 people. And 80,000 people can spread it through this nation like wildfire. Amen. But what are we doing? We're playing on the walls and watching the enemy come in. And destruction's right on, right at, right at hand. My heart literally broke. My wife and I, hearts were literally broke. Watch these kids and moms and they're spraying them down with, with uh, uh, bleach trying to kill this virus. Can I, can I tell you something? It's part of the signs of Jesus Christ. He's coming soon. It's the birth pangs, hear me, of judgments of the Lord to reach nations. And can I tell you something? Judgment really isn't bad. It's a wake-up call. Get back to Jesus. Get back to preaching the gospel of the Lord. It's the last call. Understand me. God wanted to see Judas saved. Are you hearing me? He didn't want Judas to go to hell. But Judas made that choice himself. But God is merciful, showing, showing mercy to generation, to generation, to generation, and even to this generation. If He spared Nineveh, He can spare the United States of America. If the United States of America would turn their heart back to God, we trust. If we don't, if we don't put God back in this country and God we trust, we'll be a country that has gone under. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. We aren't exempt because we live in America. Understand something. We're living in hard to live times, dangerous times. And putting our head in the sand and acting like nothing's happening around the world. And even here in the United States of America, we're in turmoil. Financially, we're in turmoil. The United States of America is in turmoil. Understand me. Hallelujah. Our present, our present administration, he's more worried under, uh, about global warming than about uh, people dying over in the Middle East. Look at me. This global warming is a hoax. All it's doing is bankrupting America and somebody else is getting rich. I'll herald it from the pulpit. It's not real. It's a hoax. And that's what they're teaching our kids in public school system. To spare Mother Nature. Yes, I believe we need to, to watch what we do. But understand, when it starts bankrupting our nation, and many people... Are losing their jobs. Uh, some of the guys I watched on television, uh, uh, the, the guys where all the coal mines and, and big coal companies was shut down and, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people lost their jobs because, you know, they, uh, they shut the coal mines down. And coal produces, I think, 30% of our electricity. And they said by the year of, of 2017, our electric bills will double. They thought, well, this wind power is going to be the answer to the problem. But can I tell you something? Many of these wind, wind t uh, mills are gone bankrupt. I asked a guy the other day that I hunt on his land, deer hunt on his land, bow hunt. And I said, because he was going to put a couple of them up on his, his property. And uh, I said, well, when are they going to start doing that? And he said, they're not going to do it. They're bankrupt. They had all the line, uh, roads Paid, you know, for him to go back in there. He said they're bankrupt. Folk, I want to tell you something. 
We're living in hard to live in times right now. We're living in a day and we're living in an age where it don't matter. You know, nobody else cares. All I want is, as long as I'm safe, as long as I'm hunky-dory, no problem. But can I tell you something? It's a wake-up call because it's going to come to your house as well to the neighbor's house. Prepare your hearts because Jesus is coming soon. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. I want us to go to 2 Timothy, if you would please. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy, the third chapter, it says this. Read it with me, if you would, please. Three, one through five. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now read this next part, if you would, please. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now understand something here before we go any further. He's not talking about the world. He's talking about the church here. Timothy is, our Paul speaking to Timothy, he's talking about the condition of the church. Men shall be lovers of themselves. What's the, pre, what's the message being heralded in the church world today? How to have a better you, or how to be a better you. Can I tell you something? You know how to be a better you? Nail yous to the cross. <laughs> Can I say that again? Nail yous to the cross. You won't have problems with yous. Selfishness. Are you hearing me, child of God? Hallelujah. When Christ died on the cross, look at me. Selfishness died with Him. We've got to reckon ourselves dead to that. Understand me. It's not me living. It's Christ living in me. He's the hope of glory. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. In other words, perilous there means hard to live in times. We're in that day and we're in that age. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Read covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Here's a picker. Look at it. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Now look at the warning given. From such turn away. From such turn away. Can I tell you something? If you're in a church that's preaching greasy grace, if you're in a church that's trying to entertain your flesh, you ought to get out of that church as fast as what you could get out of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand me, you're not going to get... You're not going to be convicted of your sin. You're not going to be challenged to live holy living. Are you hearing me? Without no man will see God. You won't hear a message like that. You won't hear a message on hell. Hear me. All you'll hear is bliss. All you hear is something that's going to tickle your ear. But I don't know about you. I like to be challenged. I said I like to be challenged. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to go deeper in the the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and not just make it into heaven on the skin of my teeth. Many are going to get in on the skin of their teeth. Look at me. Hallelujah. Don't play Russian roulette with your soul. We're talking about eternity here. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. One of the two. Understand me. Did I say hell? Yes, I said hell. Well, that's left the church too. There's too many watered down preachers that throw wet blankets over hell. But understand me, hell still burns with fire and it's not made for a human being, it's made for the devil and his imps. And the, listen to me, God didn't create hell for a person. That's why He sent Jesus Christ so that we don't have to go to a fiery inferno. Hallelujah. But we can go into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Can I say this? Do you know where you're going? You better know where you're going if you take your last breath here on the face of the earth. You better make sure that you know your next breath is going to be in the presence of the 
King of kings and the Lord of lords. We can know that we have eternal salvation. And somebody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now look at the 13th verse. Look at what it says. Let's read it. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now look what it says. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and from and that from a child a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are, are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in G- Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration, in other words, God breathed, of God, and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. Now look, jump down to the fourth verse, if you would, please. Start with the first verse. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now look at this part here. Read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Brothers and sisters, that's where we are in the church world today. Men crept in unawares, using the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, using the grace of God to be a license to sin. Can I tell you this, child of God? Without holiness, no man will see God. There's going to be a revival, but look at me. That revival is going to be a revival of holiness. I've said this and done messages on it before. Hallelujah. When Christ stepped in on the scene in his beginning of his ministry, what did he do? He went right into the temple and he cleansed the temple. What happened? Well, there's three and a half years here on the face of the earth. Just before he was crucified, he went to Jerusalem again and he cleansed the temple. Can I tell you something? God is raising up men and women today with a prophetic voice to say, make straight the path of God Almighty. They might not hear you, but we've still got to herald the message. Hallelujah. The message has got to go forth. What they want to do with the message, that's up to them. But we've got to herald the message, hallelujah, Jesus is coming soon. Make straight His gates. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Folk, when the church reaches the, the condition that you can't tell it any difference from the world, understand something, the Lord's going to say, Come up hither, for you're not worthy of them. And brother, we're there now. When we can put slot machines in the church... When we can paint the church all black, dim the lights down, we can have our casinos back in the back. Some would say, oh, come on now, Pastor Martin. Just get on the, get on the internet and just, get, just look at some of these church programs. Hear me. We bring in our rock music. I'm talking about rock bands. Playing rock music before they ever talk about Jesus, and then they don't talk about Jesus. Now, what in the world's wrong with that? Well, we've got to attract the world. They're not going to come in if we don't have the coming attraction. Nowhere in the Scripture can you show me where we've got to use the world's methods, hear me, to attract the outside world. We're to be different from the outside world. Hear me. There's got to be something different about us. Bless God forevermore. We're not a nightclub. Hear me. We're not a gambling casino. Look at me. We're not Bob Evans. We don't serve our coffee and our donuts. But understand me. We will lift the cross of Jesus Christ. And he'll draw all men unto you in the name of the Lord. Glory to God forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Folk. They want churches like this because people 
don't want to live holy before God. Look at me. I have, an, I have a belief system in myself that many of these people aren't even saved. Well, how can you say that, Pastor Martin? Simply because of this. If you're genuinely saved, you want nothing of this world, but you want, look at me, and even if you sin, you, you feel miserable when you sin. Am I right? Amen. Hear me. But understand something. When the pastor shepherd can pop a Bud Light behind the pulpit and say, go ahead and drink, kids. Nothing thing wrong with it. When we put bars back in the back of the church, hear me, and start serving beer in the house of God, ought not there be some weeping between the porch and the altar of how far we've fallen from the grace of God. Somebody has let the ball down someplace. Hear me. Some of this stuff that's going on now, look at me. 20 years, 30 years ago, it, should never, it would never have been addressed. It would never been a problem because people knew the Word of God. But now you've got these silver-tongued preachers coming in and saying, Oh, we don't want those old ways. We want a new cart. Well, go ahead and use your new cart, but that new cart's going to take you right to hell. I don't know about you, but give me the cross of Calvary any time over a new cart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lord forevermore and evermore. But Pastor Martin, you won't get very many people in your church by preaching like that. Understand me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God knows who's going to be a part of this church next year. God knows the people that are hungry for Him and want to learn more of God and live holy lives and pure lives before Him. Hallelujah. And God will send those people our direction as long as I keep preaching and challenging people to live holy and pure lives before God Almighty in the name of Jesus. We cannot be fornicating in the back seat and coming into church on Sunday morning and singing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. We can't be going out getting drunk on Saturday night and coming into the church and say, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. Hear me. The Bible says, be ye separate and come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing and I'll be a God unto you and you will be a people unto me. Hallelujah. What's he saying? He's saying, don't participate in what they're doing, but what we're doing is taking their ways and bringing it into the church. I was, uh, what was we doing one night, honey? was watching television and I don't know what it was but anyhow it might have been uh, I can't think of what it was but they was do- dancing it might have been dancing with the stars or something like that and I don't watch that program but just kind of running through the channels and I stopped a little bit it wasn't dancing with the stars I can't I don't know what it was but in, it's immaterial but they was dancing a new dance and I looked over at my wife and I said, that would be in the church within a year's time. That dance that they're doing in the world. I said, that would be in the church. Mark my words, it would be in the church. They'll take the ways of the world and try to tack Christianity onto it. But can I tell you something? It's a new cart and it's stench, a stench in the nostrils of God Almighty. Hallelujah, it's time to get serious before God because we're coming to the climax of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't be carried away, hear me, with the itchy ear syndrome. Don't let these preachers tickle your ears and and give you a sensation. Oh man, this is just wonderful. Can I tell you something? If it's not Jesus Christ and Him crucified, it's a false gospel. I said it's a false gospel. You lay the cross down alongside of any of it, hear me, child of God, and if it don't line up, look at me, it's false. I'm going to do a study coming very soon, and it's going to be on overhead called the tabernacle. And brothers and sisters, understand me, in that tabernacle was a place called the Holy of Holies. And only the high priest 
at once a year could enter into that holy place with God, hear me, to, to take the blood of a, of a spotless lamb to atone for the sins of Israel. Now understand something. To get into the Holy of Holies, blood had had to be shed upon that priest. And if that priest had sin in his life, he would die instantly in the presence of God Almighty. Stop and think of this. They had a rope tied on his foot that if he had sinned, he died. Nobody could go in to get him or they'd die too. So they had to make sure they were squeaky clean. Hallelujah. And he had bells around his garments and if they kept hearing those bells tinkling, they knew, hear me, he is still alive. But when those bells quit tinkling, they had to pull him out. He was dead. No man can live in the presence of God without the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we start bringing in, hear me, something other than the blood of Jesus Christ into the very holy of holies of God, don't be surprised if people die spiritually. Hello? Hear me. When you hear in heaven around the throne of God, angels and all those that have went before us bowing before our God and our King crying out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I don't hear people going in there, hear me in heaven going, We come in to give to give you that praises. Can I tell you something? That's a stitch in the master's nostrils. Hear me. I might get hard on people, hear me, with music, but understand something. God will not accept such stuff in the holy of holies. Hallelujah. When we do that message, you'll find out. Understand me, child of God. Some of the stuff that's going on today that they put Christianity behind it, don't be gullible and swallow it. Test it. I said test it and see if it's not of God or not. And everybody said amen and amen. Hallelujah. When we're dressing up like rock stars and mohawk hawk, uh, hairdos and, and what have you, acting like the world's rock bands. Why? So that we can attract the outside world. Be ye separate and come out from among them. We're not to look like them. We're not to act like them. We're a called out people, pure and holy before God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. And I've got a funny feeling. God's going to rearrange the furniture that has been disarranged. Hallelujah in this last day. Because there's a cleansing coming to the house of God. Yes, you're always going to have the ear tickling church. Because that's what they want. And God will give them preachers for that. Are you hearing me? But He'll also give you preachers that will preach truth. And people will get saved. Oh, you mean tell me you still believe in that old-fashioned message where people come to the altar and, and give their hearts and lives to the Lord and you literally make fools out of them and embarrass them? You better believe I give an altar call in the name of the Lord Jesus and see souls birth to the kingdom of God Almighty. You'll never see us taking you to the back room. Hear me and make keeping this thing a secret. Bless God. Yes, we'll lay hands and watch people be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Praise God forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation. Have we watered down our gospel to appease people? If we've done that, you don't need to be standing behind the pulpit. Paul says, are you there because you want to please people? Are you there because you want to please me? Hear me. God is raising up a generation of prophets 
that will not be intimidated by man's opinion, but they'll be straight-laced, they'll know what thus saith the Lord God, and they'll speak boldly on the street corners, in the houses and in the businesses. Hallelujah, they'll speak directly against what's going on in the church world today and not be intimidated, but God will give them power and authority, hallelujah, where their word will be cutting and quick and sharp. But yet they will not turn from their wicked ways because they believe a lie and trusted in a lie. And God will give them a spirit of deception to where they will believe the lie. Because they renounced truth. They renounced truth. Hear me. I don't know about you, but I, I want truth. Look at me. Understand me. We're talking about eternity. We're not playing games. God is bringing this down to an end. And in the end time, He's going to have Him an end time church. Hear me. And it's not going to be an entertainment center. But it's going to be a church without spot, without wrinkle. It's going to be red hot and on fire for God. Hallelujah. Look at me. Hallelujah. And they'll say, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. They'll preach the cross with boldness. They'll preach the fire of God because the Holy Spirit is backing every word. And can I tell you something? Many's hearts will melt inside of them because of the convicting power of the Spirit of God. And they'll drop prostrate before God and say, what must we do, brethren, to be saved? And we'll say, repent in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and you shall be born again in Jesus' name. Oh, did I say that, born again? Did I say repent? Don't you know that offend people? Well, can I tell you something? No murder, no homosexual, hear me? No idolater, no, no, no greedy person, hear me? No swindler, no gossip, no busybody will ever enter into the kingdom of God. It's very straight, folk. Very narrow. Let all gossips, hear me, be, find their place in the lake of fire as well as the liars, the cheats, and the fornicators and adulterers. Now, whoa, wait a minute, you're getting right down in my backyard. I know it. God's in our junk room, and He's cleaning out the junk in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because He's not coming back for a junky church. He's not coming back for a half-hearted church. He's coming back for a glorious church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. Perilous times are upon us. We're seeing it everywhere. Hallelujah, hear me. Over in, in, in Iraq, where we're fighting ISIL over there, and some of the cities, a small city over there. And uh, ISIL taking the heads off of the, these young little kids in front of their moms and dads. Watch their kids die because they're Christian. And we want to sit and be entertained in this house. God help us. Get us back to our knees. Bring back the altars of God in the house of God. Let there be a sovereign move of God Almighty through His house in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. I just don't want to have church. Hear me, child of God. I want to have church. Amen. I said, I just don't want to have church. I want to have church. And when I say church the first time, I'm talking about a sermonette, a couple songs, and out the door, and we've done our duty. No, I want something that's going to change our life for eternity in the name of the Lord. I want a message that's going to challenge me to the core in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want a message to examine myself to see if I'm in the faith or I'm a reprobate, one of the two. Bless God. It's no wonder they won't let me preach in a lot of churches. You know, it amazes me, even in our own denomination, a lot of them want to come and preach here, and I let them come and preach here, but they never ask me to preach in their church. You reap what you sow. I've had several of them want to preach in the church. You know what? I don't give them time of day. Because they know what type of preach, preaching I do. And I might upset their apple cart. And it could be a possibility. Not I, but the Holy Ghost. You don't know what you're going to say from one thing thing to another when the Holy Spirit gets on you. Understand me. 
But I do know one thing. Look at me. If our denomination goes the opposite direction into this seeker-sensitive move, this pastor's out of there. I said, I'm out of there. And we'll go non-denominational. Because, understand me, I'm not serving a denomination. I'm serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the King forevermore and evermore. Bless the Lord forevermore. I'll abide by the Constitution and bylaws of God Almighty and by the word of the living God and that and that alone in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear me. Bless the Lord. Am I rebellious? No, I'm not rebellious. Do I stir up waves? Yes, I stir up waves. You're, di- you're sowing discord amongst the brother. Well, there needs to be discord. Somebody needs to be stirred up if we're not preaching the truth and, st- and compromising the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said years ago, they never had to address some of these problems that we've got today. But you know what? Whole denominations have have fell wholeheartedly for this seeker-sensitive garbage freight, and they're going to offend somebody, hear me, if the preacher preaches about sin. Let's don't preach about sin. They'll just, they'll just evolve into a Christian. If we can get them in the house of God, they'll just evolve into a Christian. Can I tell you something? I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe in Christian evolution. Right. You've got to be born into the family of God Almighty. And the only way you're going to be born into the family of God Almighty is the preacher preach the cross of Calvary and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, look at me, hits the heart of the Christian and convicts them and says, man, I'm going to hell in a handbasket. I need to get myself right before God. And you come running to the altars and say, God, forgive me and come into my heart. And you get up off your knees and you're a brand new person in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you know what? You didn't even get a donut when you walked through the door. You didn't get a cup of coffee. Hear me. But you got a message of conviction that stung your heart and you walked out of here. Hear me, you come in here a sinner and walked out of here a saint knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, you don't have to be so emotional. Hear me. Some people have got to be shaken to the core. Some you've got to be gentle with. He even talks about it in the scripture. But others, you've got to sever a knockout blow. They know what they should be doing, but don't do it. But don't, I'm sorry, do it. Those are the ones that need shock therapy. Be shocked and shaked. Out of the slumber. Pastor, you're shaking me. I'm not shaking you. The Holy Spirit's shaking you. I can't shake anybody. Hear me. And I know not everybody will be pleased with me in this church today. Not everybody that shakes my hand will say, Boy, that's a good sermon. But you know what? Some will be bitter. But understand me, in the end, you'll be better. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. (laughs) Hear me. (coughs) We're coming down to the end time church. We are that end time church. We are that end time church. It's the midnight hour. I got, I'm not out to preach, (coughs) but we're running out of time. In the book of Genesis, there was a man by the name of Noah. How many has ever heard the story about Noah? Somebody help me. What happened to the people in Noah's days? Did everybody accept the message what Noah was putting forth? How many accept the message? I mean, he had, uh, the people had a big church outside of the ark doing what they wanted to do. But your Bible and my Bible says that Noah was a man of righteousness. And he walked righteous in a crooked and perverse generation. And the Lord said, I see, I I, I come down and I evaluated the earth. And he said, in the heart of mankind is is the intention to do evil at all times. 
I wonder what God's saying to this generation. Now understand something. Some would say, well, that's Old Testament, Pastor Martin. Yeah, but those are examples that we should follow. Hear me. And glean off of that that we don't follow in their ways. Hebrews talks about it. But the Lord said, Noah, I want you to build yourself an ark. He said, because I'm going to destroy mankind from off the face of the earth. I'm going to destroy every living creature. And I think it took Noah about 120 years or more to build this ark. While the people made fun of him. While that little old preacher over there, what an idiot. Let's go over and take our bag of popcorn and our straws and sit back on our, our, our lazy boys and our uh, lawn chairs and sit out there and mock the guy. Martin's interpretation. But the Bible says he made fun of him. And can I tell you something? Many make fun of you because you believe, hear me, that judgment is coming to the face of the earth. They'll say you're a gloom and doom preacher. You call it what you want. I call it blowing the trumpet in Zion. And I will not have the blood of any person on my hands. When you go out of this sanctuary, you'll know what this church believes. What you do with the message, that's up to you. You can file 13 it, you can throw it in the can, but can I tell you something? Just like Noah, I've warned you. I've warned you, and there come a time, hear me, they made mockery, they made fun. And, the, and God said, Noah, it's time for you and your family to get into the ark. Now understand, he said, come in here, into the ark. Understand, God wasn't outside of the ark, but he's right in the ark. Come on in, I'm going to shut the door. Can I tell you something? Not everybody's going to make the rapture. We've warned, and we've warned, and we've warned, and we've warned. I've been warning for 40 years, preaching the gospel. But I still keep warning that it's coming sooner than what the church expects it. Because we're seeing, we're seeing the stage being set up for the Antichrist. Hear me. What we do for God, we must do quickly, speedily. It's an urgency in the spirit realm to get as many into the boat as what can possibly be in the boat. I've done a message, it's not been many years ago, called the Ark of Safety. And I said, moms and dads, what are you building in your children? What are you building? Are you building the kingdom in their hearts or lives? Are you building an ark of safety for the coming storm? It's coming. Mark my words, it's coming. And there will be a time that God says, come on in. And God shut the door. And you know what? Even though there was no rain at that time, even though there was no water around, God said that he let loose of the seas and the oceans and the skies. And can I tell you something? The ark began to float. People might have went to the mountaintops and thought that, well, we'll go to the mountaintops and the mountaintops will secure us. Can I tell you something? Nothing in this world will secure you from the coming judgment. You've got to be in the ark of safety. You've got to be in Christ Jesus, your Lord. Hallelujah. And Him and Him alone. Glory. They went to the mountaintops and the water covered the mountaintops. Some would say, you know, they did discover the ark of, of Noah's ark on Ararat, Mount Ararat. You know, and some people are really interested in that, but understand me. If they wouldn't have discovered it or not, I still believe it because it's in the Bible. Bless the Lord. It's in the Bible. There was a great flood. Hear me. And even the the atheists believe that. There was a, a great flood. God passed judgment on mankind. And Noah and his family was the only ones saved when the judgment fell. Let me give you another example. And I promise you I'm going to close. About Sodom and Gomorrah. What about Sodom and Gomorrah? What happened there? 
God passed judgment upon those cities. What? For the sin of sodomy. Hear me. What did he do? Two angels come to visit Abraham. And they said this, Shall we keep secret why we're sent? And not tell you what, we're, what we come to do? He said, we come to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of the abominations that are going on in there. And you know the story, Abraham said, if you find, what, ten righteous or a hundred, two hundred righteous, will you spare it? I'll spare it, I'll spare it, I'll spare it, I'll spare it. It went right down. And he couldn't hardly find none but Lot and his family. Look at me. Out of those whole cities, just Lot and his family was the only ones spared. Think of me. Think of this. And even his own wife was attached to the city. Because the Lord said, when, I, when you walk out, don't look back. And what happened to Lot's wife? She looked back and turned to a pillar of salt. Died. Once we get saved, don't look back, folks. The past is in the past. You've got a bright future ahead of you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. Yes, we once used to be all these things. Hear me. No, I wasn't a homosexual. But I used to be a lot of things. But understand me. Hear me. I used to be. B.C. before Christ. All those old things are thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. Bless God. I've got a brand new start in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I've been born again. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hear me. Jesus is coming soon. And I believe the Lord has gone through the churches today and surveying every church. And I believe he's gone through this church and we thank God for the moves of the Spirit and the people that got been saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost in this church. Hear me. That God keep adding in the name of the Lord. Because I believe there's a lot in this northwest area that are hungry for God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I believe there's still a light in the lighthouse at Harvest Field Pentecostal Church of God in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Now hear me. Praise God. This is a time that we need to survey our own selves to see where I stand in the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians says he comes like a thief in the night. You don't know when he's going to come. He could come today before we end this message. He could come on your way home. But he said he comes like a thief in the night. He don't blow a trumpet and say, hey, how many have seen that, that uh, commercial? And they give this woman a, a card and it says you're going to have a heart attack today. You ever seen that commercial? You're not going to get, I'm going to come today. You won't know. Hear me. It might be the last day that we spend here on the face of the earth. And we enter into eternity. You know what? I say thank God if it happens. To spare us a lot of problems that's coming in the future. In the name of the Lord. But I do know one thing. As for me and my family... We're going to stay in the ark. You want your ears tickled? Go ahead and get them tickled. But there's coming a day that the door's going to be shut. And God will pass judgment. It's called the tribulation time. Seven years of great tribulation like this world has never seen nor experienced in its history. Think of this. God will pass the judgments of God Almighty upon a sin-stricken Nations, because they've rejected the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know where we're going to be at that time? We're going to be seated with Him in heavenly places, in Jesus' name. 
Now hear me. With every head bowed, every eye closed in here this morning. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, let this be a warning to you. You don't have to go through the great tribulation. Today is the day of salvation. You're not here by happenstance. You're here because the Spirit of God wants to speak something into your heart. And I believe even now that God is through the power of the Spirit is speaking to hearts. And I even speak to Christians. Christians, it's time to be on fire for God. It's time to allow the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to flow in and through us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there'll come a time that it'll be too late. I ask the question this morning. Hallelujah. Do you know Jesus as a personal Savior? Do you have a relationship with Him? I'm not talking about mentally or historically, but I'm talking about personal one-to-one relationship. If you're here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Him, look at me. Don't delay. Get into the family of God before it's too late. And if you're here this morning and you don't have that relationship, I want you to just shoot that hand up real high right where you're at. We're not here to embarrass. Bless the Lord. It's the best decision a person can make is to invite Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life. And if you're here this morning and you've never made that decision but want to make that decision, I want you to lift up your hand wherever you're at if you're here this morning. Hallelujah. Are you here this morning? Bless God. Bless the Lord. I'm not going to delay the message. Jesus never forced anybody to serve him. But how many Christians in here today can say, Pastor, I need a lot of work in my life. Let me see your hands all over this sanctuary. I want to make sure I'm ready when that trump blows in the name of Jesus. I want you to stand your feet with me if you would, please. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands up and surrender to him and say, Lord, today I want you to work in my life. I'm tired of doing it my way. Let stubbornness be gone from us. Let all pride be crucified. I want nothing but the pure gold of your Holy Spirit working in my life. Lord, today we surrender all. Holy Spirit, here am I. Work through me and in me. In the name of Jesus, today, I believe there's a turnaround. In the name of the Lord, I curse all darkness. And I want nothing but the light of the gospel of Christ. To build me, encourage me, strengthen me. In Jesus' name. I accept that by faith in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you would please? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. There was a man come into the office today just before service, before anybody got here, before me, dying with cancer. Come up to the office and was talking to me. So I was sent over here by Brother Bill Reader. How many remember Brother Bill Reader? Amen. And Bill left me a message on my answer machine. Said I'm sending a man over to talk to. He's dying of cancer, and, and uh, I've, I've told him to go. Told him to come over, him to come over to the church. He was here at the church dying of cancer. And I'm. He looked very frail. And we was set, I was standing out there and and uh, trying to get ready for. Th- the service this morning, putting notes down so that Jesse could put it up on the screen and what have you. And he was telling me and showing me some of the things that he, they had to do. They had, to, they had got to take his insides out and do this and that and all different types of things. And big old mass on the side of his, on his side there. And I said, let me ask you one question. And I said, do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? And he started talking about, well, I was a Catholic, and I did. I said, don't wait a minute. I said, no, let's not talk about 
denominations. I said, I'm asking you one question. I said, do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you invited Christ into your heart and into your life? I said, that's the most important matter of your life right now, is that you have that relationship with him. Hallelujah. And I began to question him. And he said, yes, he said, I've invited Christ into my heart and my life. I said, that's good. I said, that's good. And I said, I believe God can heal you of that cancer in the name of the Lord. Now understand something. He was so weak, he couldn't even stand it. Another guy brought him in. I believe, hear me, that God touched his heart, touched his life in Jesus' name. I certainly believe that. His name's Greg, so I'm going to ask you if you just remember Greg in your prayers, if you would please. Bless the Lord that God deal bountifully with his life and that he receive a miracle from God Almighty in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But I said that to say this, the most important thing in your life is your relationship that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ and that alone. That alone. Yes, health is vitally important. But the most important, we're talking about eternal dividends. Where will I spend eternity? Will I spend it in heaven or will I spend it in hell? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but thank God we can know where we're going. And I'm not going to preach no more to you. I'm finished. I'm done. I'm going to let you go. In the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask my wife to close us in prayer, if you would, please, honey. Love you. We bless you today. In Jesus' name.